Hey everybody, Thomas here from my channel Astronize and today I would like to talk about this object in my Compressed Cosmos series. So Compressed Cosmos, a very short um, video with just a few functions or maybe only a single function explaining a basic concept of our universe. And what you see here is an artistic impression of a black hole. And the black hole here in the very center, which is apparently black, it's not really the singularity, so the point of the yeah, infinite density and the point where we don't know what really happens. This is, the, this is the border where light cannot escape the influence of the singularity. And this sphere of influence is de defined or computed by the so-called Schwarzschild radius. Now the Schwarzschild radius is being derived from Einstein's general relativity, yeah, general Einstein's relativity, complex functions and so on, but the function that leads us to the computation of this radius is pretty simple and I would like to show you how to compute it. Now here in my repository Astronize YouTube Tutorials we have a folder called Compressed Cosmos and in this one we have now today, well today is yeah, beginning March of 2025, we have six scripts and one script is called um, Schwarzschild Radius. So if we click on it, we will find here a small batch called Open in Colab, and then we can execute our code uh, on a Google instance also for free. There are different subscription methods, but yeah, I don't get I don't, I don't get paid by Google. I just use it for those of you, like I don't know, students or people who just start coding, to immediately start using the things without the stress of installing it locally, virtual environments, VS Code or what have you. So trying to keep it very simple. Now here we have two cells. The first one is this so-called Schwarzschild radius. Now let me already execute it here. It puts up a warning, but you can ignore it. Uh, this script is trustworthy. You can see the code. Um, we have here a very basic function that uses this equation here in line 20, uh, 35. It's basically two times the gravitational constant times mass in kilograms divided by the speed of light squared. Now this leads us to the Schwarzschild radius, so a pretty basic and simple equation. And I put here two input values, namely the, um, the, 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 the mass value, yeah, like a number, and the mass unit. So you can use here, for example, one time the sun mass or five times the earth mass or also kilograms because only using kilograms would be a little bit, um, yeah, maybe not so intuitive and converting, let's say, one sun mass or earth mass to kilograms is pretty basic, basically done here in this else if part of the function. Now, if we compute this for our three objects, like one, sun, one times the sun, the earth and one metric ton, we get here the results. And you see, for example, our sun would have a size of around three kilometers or a radius, uh, the size would be six kilometers. And our earth would be compressed basically to a small glass marble. So a very tiny object. Now, if you see here, for example, the one metric ton is, it's super tiny, very small. And this leads us also to something called the um, Hawking radiation. Yeah, So the Hawking radiation found by Stephen Hawking is something that says that a black hole evaporates over time. And this evaporation rate is higher the smaller the black hole gets. Now this is important. Why? Because there were some people concerned when like the Large Hadron, Hadron Collider was activated in Switzerland that the high energies would lead to some kind of black hole or tiny black holes that would eat up the entire planet. But you can compute for yourself uh, the size of a black hole that, that has only this mass of th theoretically, let's say a few protons would be so small that it would evaporate basically in no time. Yeah, Why or how does Hawking radiation work or what the mechanics behind it? Well, maybe something for a different video. But this one here is basically the reason why um, we don't have to fear of any lab black holes. They're very tiny and they evaporate rather quickly. 
Now, something from a movie, maybe you have seen the movie Interstellar, where they are walking on some kind of um, water planet and the time is a little bit um, working there differently than in a spaceship. Yeah, they return to the spaceship after a few hours of work and there a few years, I think, passed. And this is due to the so-called time dilation. And there's also a very simple equation. Yeah, it's basically the square root of 1 minus the Schwarzschild radius divided by the distance to the black hole. And what does it do? It um, If you are very far away from the black hole and you see somebody closer to the black hole, the clock appears to be running slower and slower the closer the person gets to the black hole. And this is a function I computed or I defined here uh, where we have like for example 100 million sun masses, we are two times away from the singularity and the time dilation factor here is 0.71. Now use the, we can for, use for example the movie uh, wiki or so to determine what is the um, the mass of the black hole in the movie, I, I, really, I really don't know. And you can then compute the time dilation factors there and get a feeling how time works in this kind of extreme environments. Of course, a human being would probably not survive for so long in such a gravitational, strong gravitational pull. Well, this was all for today's session of Compressed Cosmos, just two small basic scripts, but I hope you can use it maybe for your studies or so. And if you find any bugs or so, please report them in the issues. And in the meantime, I'm continuing working on a library and an ML project, but it, it really takes a lot of time. Sometimes I think I'm a little bit overdoing things for the video pro for the project part, but well, let's continue with this compressed stuff. Until next time.